Welcome to the Company of Women International presenting the Beauty from Ashes TV program. We're into the fourth uh, discussion now. Joel, yeah, Joel, I knew he was going to come back sooner or later. <laughs> Uh, rifle, rifle scutter <laughs> and me. Ever since I talked with he and his dad on on an interview program, I have wanted to call him Joel. And I said today earlier that this is what I have to stop and think. But this time it slipped out. See, so what's in your mind will come forth. Mm. Uh, but at any rate, we are just having a wonderful time and. This is the fourth in a series uh, of talks that we are doing, and one thing has just led to the other, and it's been so rich and fulfilling. And so uh, he and I were talking it over, and we kind of think that to be able to finish this off, to give you sort of a rounded um, program, a way of thinking, as we're trying to get you to think as the Lord would have us think, and this is why he had us to do this series. So we were, we were t thinking that we would do a discussion on the kingdom. I think that would be good, yes. Um, because the Bible is a book about a kingdom. We hear about two kingdoms, kingdom mm -hmm. of light, kingdom of darkness. How do they work? When you were born, each and every one of us were born into the kingdom of darkness because of what Adam did. We came through the mm -hmm. seed of Adam. But when we, as we said earlier, gave our lives, died to self, and now we live unto God, He's our Lord and our Savior. The Word says in First uh, Colossians that He has translated us. The Father has made us able. The Father has qualified us to now be partakers of the inheritance and everything that the kingdom of light has. And the Word says that He has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness, where we all were, into the kingdom of light. Now, okay, what do I do now that I am in the kingdom of light? How does this kingdom work? What are the rules? What are the regulations? What am I allowed to do? What am I not allowed to do? And I think a lot of people don't understand the well, kingdom. Well, one thing they've got to understand is that you have chosen for yourself a king. <laughs> yes, most definitely. And that's the thing about, mm -hmm. about Jesus is that he is Lord and Savior. Many, many times we like the Savior aspect of Jesus, but we don't like the Lordship uh -huh. of Jesus. Uh -huh. He's both. We can't just say, oh, well, you know, I enjoy him saving me and that's good enough for me. But we have to accept him as Lord, which means he says, to the best of my abilities, I try and do. Mm -hmm. And that is in line with the grace message that is preached today. Yes. That a lot of people, when they preach grace, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, if the grace is so great, then I can just go ahead and do anything because I'm under grace. The blood of Jesus, forgive me. Certainly that's, not. It's, that's, it's, that's along the lines of picking and choosing what you want to believe out of the Word of God. And even Paul had to deal with people in his time and say in the book of Romans, yes. he says, shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? Yes. God forbid. So it's not this grace message, go ahead, do what you want, sin is okay. That's not the grace Absolutely. message at all. Grace is the ability of God that will empower you to come against sin so that you do not have to sin anymore. So giving into grace is not allowing you to sin, but it sets you free from, from sin. sin. That's and the that's, difference. That is so important, so important. Yeah. So the same in the kingdom now. Now that I am in this kingdom, I have a savior and a lord. Mm -hmm. He's and the king. It relieves me of thinking that I have to respond to any and everything around. All I have to be responsible to, honor, respect, and obey is my king. Mm. That's, that's Jesus. Yes, and what he says. Mm -hmm. And that's all. And when I do that, he takes care of me. Yes. And now there's he the other does. thing, you know. He does. Does God really have enough? Can he really get to me what I need? Yes, he Be can. <laughs> exactly, he can. 
but we haven't heard that. Yeah. We've heard, you know, wrong teaching that God will take away something because you did this or that's right. God will make you poor so that you can be humble. That's wrong. That's very wrong. In the kingdom, which king of a kingdom is going to take away from his people so that when other kingdoms and nations look at that nation, they would want to say, wow, look how poor and wretched those people are. Wow, they must not have a good king. God doesn't want that for the kingdom that no. he rules and reigns over as well. And there's no father that would do that to his own children. Not at all. In this country, I'm not American, but I know for a fact that in this country, if you abuse your children, you will go to jail for child abuse. That's right. There is a law against a father or a parent or someone abusing a child. Mm -hmm. But it's so easy for people to say, well, that was God that did that because he's trying to teach you something. That would be abuse. God is a loving father. He's a caring God. He gave his only son mm -hmm. to take away all our sins, sickness and disease so that we can live in peace and righteousness here on earth today. So just he is love. Mm. He, he is doesn't love. have love. He is love. He can't be or do anything mm. else but love. That's and why he does not even remember anything you ever did wrong. All your iniquities are gone. He, he doesn't even consider them anymore. Well, once again, renew your mind to what the word says. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far he removes our sins from us. Mm -hmm. And now, um, a lot of people know this, but why did it not say as far as the north is from the south? Why does he say east to west? Because you can physically measure the north pole to the south pole. I thought that was so... It's like, I didn't realize that. I mean, how is that so? <laughs> we know exactly where the north pole is. We know where the so, south pole is. So you can physically measure and say, this is the distance between right. that point and this point. But on the globe, on the planet, where does east start? Where does west where does, start? Where it does was east, like, it I doesn't. Don't. It just goes, it's on, it's there, there's, it doesn't, that's how it, God no, removes our yeah. sin. It's not that he can measure again and go mm -hmm. back and say, well, that's how, it's <laughs> like, there that is I no measurement. <laughs> it's just, it's gone. It's in, it's gone. No more to be seen. The first time I heard that, I thought, wow, that yeah. is really neat. So that's how far he's removed our sins from us. That's how good he is. And if he has removed our sins that far, if he remembers our sin no more, why should we? Because we won't let it go. <laughs> we just have to be responsible. We have to do something. So we remember what's wrong. Well, in this kingdom, we just obey the king. Mm -hmm. And there's a very important verse in the Gospels where Jesus says, all you are heavy laden and burdened down and come to me. Because I will give you rest. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. Right. So, so many people are bogged down by everyday life. Yes. And we can see people who are just not sleeping, literally working three or four jobs. That is not God's plan for you. No. That no, is no, not no. the will of God for your life. And you may say, well, I'm a single mom. I've got so many kids. I've got to pay the rent. I've got to... We understand that, but that is not what God has for you. So if we go to the king of this kingdom and say, Okay, Lord, why did you create me? What did you put me on this earth for? Now you use your gifts and your talent. And he will show you because he said that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide. And now when he shows you what burden he wants you to carry, it becomes a light burden. Mm -hmm. And you can just see someone who's living out their God-given destiny. They oh. work a lot. They're up early. They're working. But it's not, oh, my goodness, I've got to go to work today. It's there is praise such Jesus, I'm going to work yeah, today. Yeah. And there's a difference. There is and such a people difference. People see that. And in this kingdom, God wants witnesses <laughs> yes. for him yes. to say, this Tell is a people good king. about him. <laughs> this is a good king. He takes care. Mm -hmm. You know, the word says a very famous verse. I'm sure many of us know Jeremiah 29, 11. God yes. says, I know the plans I have for that you. I have for you. Now, how many times do other people come and they will tell you about God? Mm -hmm. And they will tell you about what they think the Bible says about yes. what somebody mm -hmm. else told about God. And it's not God at all. 
That's right. And it's like God is saying, I need a witness. Yes. What is a witness? If you go to court and somebody saw a murder take place, when they call a witness, it has to be someone you who saw. first account in the first person mm -hmm. saw something happen, heard something happen. They can't take the stand and say, well, my cousin said that my sister heard that her uncle told her right, about the right. name. Yeah. That's not a witness. No, They're going to kick you out and say, listen, we can't take that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for God, it's the same. In this kingdom, now they need to be witnesses to come up and say, first-hand experience. Right. First -hand. I have seen God deliver me from a bed of no getting up is what the doctor said. Yeah. That's what they said to me that you will be bedridden forever. My king healed me and picked me up out of that, out bed. Of that bed. I'm a witness. I can testify to his saving grace and his power. You can testify and be a witness to Psalm 10720. He sent his word and healed, and healed you yes. and delivered you from the pit of destruction. Amen. Witness. He has a witness about the goodness of God. And I am also a witness to this effect. And it's mm. like God's word is true. And if you say it and remember it, because this is how, he told me not to remember his, his word. That is to try to commit it to memory. He told me to just be his word. And I thought, how do you do that? Mm. But then he's been consistently over the years teaching me how to be that. And this word is important because I experienced it firsthand. Yes. He sent his word and he healed me because I believed his word. And he delivered me out of the pit of destruction mm. as he did you. Now one very important word in that verse is it says he sent his word and healed and healed it didn't say that he sent his word to heal yes because sometimes something gets sent and it never reaches the place it was <laughs> sent to so he, god didn't have one intention i want these people healed i will send my word to them mm -hmm. because then they could cut off the word and say we don't want it or they didn't understand right, it right. but it said he sent his word and he healed them. He and healed. There's a difference between two and And not like some and. people say, he will heal. That, that may be true. He will continue to heal. But if you don't believe that God has healed you with his word when he gives it to you, then forget about it. He will because mm. Jesus healed them all. Yes, at that stage. So yes. when we take the word, we have to believe that when he went to the cross, everything I'm suffering with now, he bore in his own flesh on his body. Right. Therefore, it was done at that time. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for the manifestation, but it's right. taken care of. Right. So right. back to the kingdom. Here in, in, in the book of <laughs> Matthew, two verses here, very important. It says uh, in Matthew 3, in, uh, verse 1, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent. We spoke a little about, a yes. bit about repentance before. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So here comes this guy who was prophesied about many, many years before, saying that he would make a way. He would be the voice crying out in the wilderness. And then... After so many years of the word being spoken, the word being spoken, that word took on itself flesh and became John. It became John. And John comes and he says, repent. <clears throat> and he doesn't say repent because I have a good idea. Repent because I heard something <laughs> from someone. Repent because what you're doing now doesn't work. He says, repent for this reason. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is the here. Kingdom Repent is here. because you're not in the kingdom. That's it. And now the kingdom is here. Repent means change your mind and do things according to the ways of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. then, Turn around. Change your ways. Yes. Renew your mind to what the kingdom is. Then uh, chapter 4 in verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven. Is at hand. Is at exactly. hand. Exactly. Jesus said the same thing. Repent. The kingdom is here. 
now that we are in the kingdom, like we said before, what is a kingdom? How does a kingdom work? Why do we need a kingdom? And for anyone growing up in this marvelous country of America, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to understand yes, kingdom. Yes, yes it is. Because this is a democracy. And a democracy is very, very different to a kingdom. And when we grow up in a democracy, which is marvelous to have, but we are taught that if you don't like something in a democracy, mm -hmm. you have a voice. And you must let your voice be heard. And we are hearing this a lot today, that anybody can say anything and... Um, they need to know the Word of God. Yes. So in a democracy, you can, you know, if you don't like the president, if you don't like a congressman, if you don't like anyone, you can write things about them in the news, you can say things, and because of your freedom that you have in this democracy, nothing gets done to you. But in a kingdom, you can't do that. You it's very, very different. And people who grow up in today's China, countries like North Korea, mm -hmm. there are countries in Africa where there's a kingdom or mm -hmm. a communist party. Mm -hmm. They have one leader. And if you say anything against that leader, you are very, very likely to going to lose your life. And that's just the way it is in that kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it is in God's kingdom that when you say something against him, he's going to take your life and kill you. That's not what <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm saying. <laughs> But in a kingdom on the earth, like countries where they have kingdoms, that is how it works. So when we become a citizen of heaven, we are strangers here on earth. Yeah. Our home is heaven. But we are now in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of light, as the word says in Corinthians, uh, sorry, Colossians chapter 1. Yeah. God is the king. He is the law. What does kingdom mean? It means there's a king. And his domain, kingdom, the king and his domain. He's in charge. He takes care. He's the one running everything in the kingdom. And this is so marvelous, as you said. It takes the pressure yeah. off of me to do things, to run things, to make sure that everything is working mm -hmm. smooth. No, the king takes care of that. Right. After he's got everything in place, then he says, okay, now you go and do that. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Don't worry about the people on the other side of the right. kingdom. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't, you just do, here is your command for the day. Mm -hmm. You go and you do that. And usually if you do this, there's always some benefit as a result of it, which is true with Jesus, because if we do what he says, there is a benefit. And if you don't, then you're going to get the consequences. And that's the reason where you hear so many people think that um, they, ju they, they lose their freedom by, because you can't do this, you can't do that when you uh, become religious or join a church. That's not so. And the reason it's not so is because those things are there to protect you. Don't run into the street, a car will hit you. Mm. Yes. God's trying to protect us. Yes. That's the kingdom way. They've made rules and regulations. It's for your protection and not to hurt you. Yes. So this king then carries the responsibility to take care of the citizens of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And God is so good. I mean, he, the word <laughs> says he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Right. When Peter needed money, he said, man, go and catch fish. Take the money out of his mouth. I mean, the Bible is just full of it. When the lady ran out of oil, there's no shortage in this kingdom. This is something that uh, I don't think any of us have got a full comprehension no, of. I, I don't think so. I've seen glimpses of it. Mm -hmm. I've ran into it before. I've seen <laughs> yes. the yes, king just have. provide in, yeah. in miraculous ways. But we have not seen the fullness of it yet. Oh, no. But it's on its way. That is something I think is, is making it more exciting all the time mm. as we're seeing the age wind down is to see how God is fulfilling a lot of what his word has said he would do for his people. Yes. And it's happening now. Most definitely. 
Um, one thing in a kingdom that we do not understand is about the provision that the king makes for his people is, is a word favor. Yes. We don't understand favor in a democracy. No, no. Um, if we go to Psalms 5, and we'll look there at verse 12. We'll quickly just read there. Psalms 5, verse 12. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. That's you and I. Yeah. That's you. If you have made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are righteous. He will bless you. We don't become a Christian just for the blessing, but when you become his child, he wants to bless. Yes, but will. it goes on and says, with favor, you will surround him as with a shield. This word favor is, is missed in a democracy. Yes. Um, if I take for an example, let's say, as things are now, the president of the United States, President Obama, if President Obama would come to one of us or one of you and say, I really, really appreciate everything you are doing for me. I'm so thankful for the work that you have put in for my, my you know, uh, being reelected as president, so on and so forth. I want to give you something. Mm -hmm. And he would say, I will give you a hundred thousand acres of prime land up in the fields of Oregon. Wow. Just to say thank you for what you <laughs> yeah. have done. That sounds like favor, but it's not. It's corruption. Mm -hmm. Because those 100,000 acres do not belong to President Obama. Nope. He does not have the right to give. But somebody owns them. Yes. So he's going to take from someone and give right. it to another. Therefore, it's corruption. But in a kingdom, if there were a king mm -hmm. and he owned the whole land, which a king does... If the king would come to you and say the exact same words, mm -hmm. man, I'm so thank you for all the work you've done. Thank you for helping me be real. I am so grateful for you. Mm -hmm. I am going to give you 100,000 acres of the fields of Oregon. He can do that. Why? Because it all him. belongs to him. Right. Not corruption. Right. That's a kingdom mindset. That's right. So when we realize that all the healing, all finances, everything that is, belongs to God. to God and the word says that if he has given us all things how will he not give us I mean if he has not given his son to us how will he not with that give us all good things and it's, Jesus came yeah. and he said to the people fear not little flock but it's the pleasure of, of your, your father, father to give Indeed. you the kingdom that's the king that we have so when God comes to you and he says I will supply every need that you have. We need to agree with that and know, not thinking by, oh my goodness, but look what the economy is like. Look what's happening yeah. in this nation. Look what's the stock market in the world. That has nothing to do with us because that's a different kingdom. A different kingdom entirely. And, we, and if you, this is why you don't want to listen to all the local, uh, not local, to all the news because it's carrying such bad information and it's about a kingdom which is um, the kingdom that's being judged, the Babylonian kingdom, yes. as opposed to his kingdom because his word will tell you what to believe and to think on and you just, you have to shut yourself up with the Lord yes. in that secret place. Yes, there we go. <laughs> there we back to that place. And remain steady and fixed because the powers of the foes that come against him just cannot, um, the foes that come out, I'm getting, I've gotten the word turned around. <laughs> the foe that comes against the power of God cannot uh, prevail. It just cannot do it. Yes. But you have to know what the word says. And that's the kingdom of God. Most definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> we, this is getting more exciting all the time. <laughs> Whew, and I think if we're going to try to finish it up and, and for, we may have to go on many more times. I just want you all to be prepared and aware, okay? 
<laughs> Sounds good to me. Yes, and if you have some comments you want to make in the process of this, there's something you'd like to hear, then we'll entertain that thought too, won't we? Sure, most definitely. <laughs> we welcome people to write in and tell us what okay, you think. Okay, well, we're running the camera down again. Um, Rifle, we get started, it just gets to going good. Yes, time we have flies. To slow it up. So, um, are we at a point that you would like to just bless them for what they have been privileged to hear us talk about for four Let's weeks? Let's do that, yes. It's always good to bless. Yes. <laughs> and Right. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you that we've heard about the kingdom, which is a real reality. It's the truth. And we thank you, Lord, that nothing can stand against you and your kingdom. Your word says that the kingdom of God shall reign and there shall be no end to this kingdom. We thank you that you have made us through the sacrifice of Jesus, citizens of your kingdom, the kingdom of light. This is where we belong because this is what you have created us for. We bless you for this. We bless everyone hearing this message. And we bless you, Lord, above all. We love you and we praise you and thank you for this. In yes. the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. Lord. And Lord, I just want to ask that for any and everyone that have heard us and the things that we have said in regard to your word and the kingdom and about the soul and the spirit and the body, I just ask by the blood of Jesus that you seal this to their minds and their spirits, that though they may go and forget it for a period of time, it is so sealed there that your word is live and it comes forth and you will bring it back. Holy Spirit, I know you do this. Bring it back to their remembrance. You be, um, be like a nagging wife or a barking dog. Don't cease recalling to their minds that which we have spoken because this is how they will know that you are alive and Holy Spirit that you are speaking to us continually and that there is no way we can get away from you and we just love you for this. God bless you.